Welcome to Fireteam Chat, IGN's Destiny Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Joining me today is CJ Gibson. What's up? Brian Malkowitz. Hello. And some of you may know that Tefty Tef was supposed to be on the show. There was a little bit of a scheduling issue where we had to record a little bit earlier. We are going to have him on again in the future. And uh, sorry, Tefty, if you end up watching this. I, f I feel a little bad. Uh, but anyway, uh, we will have you back on the show. And I apologize for the, the miscommunication. Um, on today's show, here's what we're going to be talking about. The delay, the raid changes, the how that stuff's going to work, the event, what we think of the event, A bunch. the new armors and the armor grind, how we feel about the legendary requirements. Let's get right into it. What do you guys think is the biggest topic? Is it the event that's going on right now, the delay, or the raid? Uh, the delay. The delay. Yeah, okay. The delay. So yeah. let's start with that. So. Bungie put out a weekly update basically saying that they are delaying Shadowkeep two weeks. Two weeks. And uh, they let the community know right away. And uh, they kind of said a few other details about when this is going to launch. Here's what they said. The world's first with a new raid, Garden of Salvation. We have a name. Yeah, raid name. Yeah, yeah. We'll be on Saturday. There it is. October 5th. Thank it's a you, weekend Bungie. raid race. Thank and you. contest will be active. Uh, Moments of Triumphs are going to be extended through September 17th. Uh, we're going to run additional Iron Banner the week of September 17th as well. And Cross Save will come online later this summer. How many weeks are left this summer? Two? Uh, Three? Well, we, summer lasts through, August, through so. August. And I think for a little bit of September. Yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah. Well, it's on the way. We got to move to Steam soon. There's like the whole Steam thing. And uh, yeah, uh, basically what they said is it has become increasingly clear to us that our release for this fall would benefit from a bit more time in the oven. Here's the thing. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> It is. Yeah. Yeah. We get to play Borderlands <laughs> oh, 3. I, know. I was dreading you know? I was no. dreading that. I was like, we get three, four days with <laughs> yeah. Borderlands 3 before Destiny 2 comes out. Now yeah. I'm actually glad that we're getting that two weeks of uh, buffer. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are feeling that way. And it's funny, though, because I was wondering at first uh, when we were looking at that and seeing it come out what the reception was going to be. And it seems, for the most part, positive overall. But I do like how they announced a bunch of miscellaneous details of other things simultaneously. So it didn't just be That's like... That's to dilute the, the sadness well, of a delay. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's delayed. And if they had said only that, that would have not been, I think, the best uh, way to go about that. The, the, additional, the additional context is great. Here's some of it the is. other stuff coming out. Uh, the week it would have launched. Monster <laughs> Hunter World Iceborne, September 6th. Borderlands 3, September uh, 13th. Yep. They moved to October 1st. So they are coming up against uh, Breakpoint. Call of Duty's end of the month, and Outer Worlds is also end of the month. I think this is a much better window. Yes. Near the end of the month, we have like Code Vein, FIFA 20, Tropico 6, but I don't think those are direct competitors for, no, no. for Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. So, yeah, I mean, Borderlands is the direct competitor, but even yeah. Modern Warfare, you know, jumps in there at the end of October. Mm -hmm. It's obviously going to, you know, I mean, there's just Call of Duty fans, period, but I would say the bigger crossovers between Borderlands and you Destiny. Think so, do you think some of this? has to do with how close Borderlands releases to Shadowkeep. So I was wondering if you were going to ask that. Or yeah, like, was it, it, that, it's, but I mean, like, you got to think about, like, you got to think, I know they're not with Activision. Borderlands and Iceborne, yeah. two, two big, really big, things. big competitors mm -hmm. like, for Destiny. If you think about I know that Bungie's not with Activision anymore, but, like, take a look at, like, how, how uh, I know this is a, big, a much bigger Titan, but, no pun intended. Titanfall. Um, <laughs> is, that, is that when, when Rockstar announced um, their release date, and it was a November release. And everybody right. got everybody out of the went way. around it. Like Call of Duty, a another Titan of the industry. Yeah. Always a November release date. It was like mm. October. We're going yeah. in October. Because yeah. they're like, no one wanted to go up against that game. So like yeah, I can imagine the same thing happening. I'm sure they also will benefit from the extra two weeks. So, uh, of course, like yeah. any developer that that is yeah. able to delay yeah. like that, uh, it's it's good. They're just gonna be able to polish things mm. more and yeah. And, I'm always fine with them doing that. Here's, I mean, they haven't done it, I don't think, uh, historically at all. Like, while well, Destiny, I mean, obviously their initial launch of Destiny, but prior to that, I don't think this has ever been done since any of the DLCs I think, have been announced. Yeah, I don't. So, 
like uh, no, I mean, for destiny don't call, don't call yeah for destiny, for destiny or yeah. bungie just in general i don't no. know about their delay history did they ever delay i think Halos? i think technically rise of iron has existed because they wanted another year for Destiny. yes but it was mm -hmm. never and it wasn't a, a it wasn't a technical delay because we didn't know when destiny 2 was launching but that's what i mean they've never actually like had a release date and then exactly it that's what it was e yeah. even the launch date of destiny 2 i think they actually moved forward a few days on account of it was supposed to be like september 9th and it released september 6th right or yeah um but so what but, i was going to say is i think that this is good uh from a few ways only because there's so many different things coming up with this next dlc that we've never had in the past and look look destin there's a couple things they mentioned about like you know there's a lot of dates that have changed now like you know season of opulence is i think still the same but then cross save is happening earlier like some of the yeah I, I went through all actually those. like so yeah, that, that's coming yeah i know but then the official dates on every single one of them right like it's nice yeah. that those things are staggered so mm -hmm. it's not going to be oh here's like a crap ton of changes all at one time and now you're also worried about the raid and you're worried about the new content mm -hmm. and you're worried about this and you're worried about that so it is nice yeah. that it's kind of staggered yeah i like it a lot uh Here's what Mark and Luke put together. They said, this fall is the first step on a journey for what our teams want Destiny 2 to become, a place for you and your friends to play anytime, anywhere, owning the action MMO and RPG elements that we love about the game and crushing barriers to entry for friends. We just need a bit of extra time so to take the first step. My, my now, here's the thing. I imagine Luke saying that. And I don't mention Mark saying that. And that message is read very differently depending on who, <laughs> depending would, on who, who would have read that. My, my biggest takeaway from that is the part where he says, this is the beginning of the journey. Our team wants Destiny 2 to go in. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, man, they have so Destiny many Destiny 3 players. not happening. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that. Like, I think we already know <laughs> Brian that Destiny Malkowitz, 3. Brian think, I, think, I think we already know that Destiny 3 is <laughs> happening at some point. I'm pretty sure they said that. But... Um, like they, it's just crazy that they have still, they still have so many more plans for Destiny 2. Like they're saying, this is the start of a journey of where we want Destiny 2 to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, this is us entering the third year of Destiny 2. Yeah. By yeah. this time, like, like in Destiny 1, we had known that Destiny 2 was like on the horizon. Yeah. Like, but here they're talking about like starting something new. Yeah. I mean, there was still an official Which talk great. of it, you know, back when Rise of Iron was out. It took, I think, until March for leaks to come up. And yeah. You know, see posters and stuff like that from oh, those those GameStop crew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's weird. It does seem like it uh, it could be going for a while now. These armor photos, we're just looking at some pictures here. Yeah, those look really cool. I, I think you know what? Again, uh, I'm a hunter guy, but Titan for sure has got the best. Titan's armor. got the best armor. Yeah. War, uh, second is Hunter Warlocks. I, what the hell's going on with that weird know. mask? <laughs> it's like a I don't like mask. it at all. I'm yeah. a Warlock main. I do not like that it weird mask thing. Uh, the the well, Titan has some great looking armor. That's fantastic. The the yeah. Titan astronaut armor is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, so I think the astronaut armor looks a lot like the set you can get on Titan, they, right? Yeah, Titan, yeah. It looks Titan, very, it looks very, which is an astronaut. This yeah. looks more, this looks mm -hmm. more like look the armor that they were wearing in the very first cut the launch one of the Dean launch cutscene of Dean One when yeah. they landed on Mars and they saw that they saw is that Mars the when traveler they saw, when, mm -hmm. they, when they found the traveler the first time. Well, yep. to me, the hunter set looks like a one-eyed mask for hunters like that. It that does. It does. You're right. It does. But that I don't even want to talk about the warlock. <laughs> <laughs> the Brent, warlock looks like the strike set from uh, not Mindbender, but that uh, the other one like uh, the the scattered. It, you know sort what it really looks like? It looks like someone set. made a really bad Eris Morn Halloween mask. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. All the rest of them, the, the, the whole armor looks good. It's just the helmet. It's just the the mask that looks odd in mm -hmm. in the warlock situation. I mean, the hunter no, it's kind got of the three eyes like for Eris, Brian. Yeah, exactly. Eris made it for you. Eris made it for you. Do you know how long she spent knitting that? I'm sorry, Eris. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Not digging it. I love the astronaut. The, uh, the, the other two are great. I love the other two. Yeah. yeah, the astronaut's sort of fun. It's a little silly to think that you're going to don an astronaut set, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see this, and I am excited to see a look at some of the, the armors that we can expect to acquire within this this new event. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot to reveal between now and October 1st. The blog will uh, be lively next week with some information on cross-save, PC migration, and everything else yeah. you'll need to know to kick ass this fall. Boom. And that, and that was the reason why I think, you know, that delay and some of these staggered dates now is really good. Um, so... Raid on Saturday. Can we go there? Because I Thank feel you, like... Thank you, Bungie. Yeah, like Fran... Dude, I don't know how many times... I mean, we could probably do a smash cut of every time Fran has said that in the last year and a half to two years. So. Make it on a Saturday? Fran gave him the shout out and uh, yeah, like make it Saturday. So it is Saturday now. Yeah, basically they moved it... Uh 
Content drops on October 1st, raids on October 5th. Yeah. Totally fine with this. Yeah. This sounds great. Uh, I think it'll give more people a chance to compete. Yep. You know. Uh, contest rules still in effect for uh, yeah, contest, 24 hours. Contest will still be there. Yep. And yeah, this sounds excellent to me. I think it's a smart move. Are there any, is there any way we could find a complaint about this? <laughs> Huh, I mean, How could we complain about? It? Mm, let's uh, see. Part of me hopes that they like. Oh, I gotta take Saturday off. Oh, oh man, that's oh, my that's my day off. You're I don't want to play now, video Justin, games. You're married now. Oh, All right. Oh, yeah, wife's yeah. not gonna like that. Those are the weekend days. <laughs> Ugh, family, kids. Ugh. No, I think I'm that these sorry. are all. Uh, you know, this is really good. Now, there's a lot of games coming out prior to that launch. So, I mm. mean. Now, you guys did that whole grind. That's I, what I'm hoping that is, like, not uh, going to be well, a thing. Well, and here's me, the thing. I, yeah. tip, I, I typically avoided it now just because I don't want to commit to anybody. And then as well, like, we we're building these studios and there's a bunch of other stuff going on here. So mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of, you know, the amount of time and energy that it takes. Now, at least if you take the time and energy, you'd probably be able to run the raid for a couple days and feel like you could do your 24-hour marathon. Yeah. Will you do that? Me, I don't know if I'm going to compete this raid race. Interesting. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I just uh, for for me, I've, I've done it so many times. Like we did I, it, right? Destin and I did the raid race yeah. together. You know, yeah. you know, it, it's it's less about the raid race day because that's actually mm -hmm. the fun part. Mm -hmm. That's actually yeah. really enjoyable. Is like getting into the raid and not knowing anything and just like figuring all these puzzles out. But my biggest problem is how much you need to play yeah. for the raid launches. And I'm not just talking about the day of, I'm talking about the up. month or month and a half leading up to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a part of me is hoping that Bungie builds it in a way that when you, when the new season starts, like nothing you did prior to that reset will benefit you going into the raid. Yeah. yeah. So that way everybody is literally on the same playing field and goes into the raid exactly the same. Yeah, we don't really know what is going to happen, what to expect with how the raid prep's going to work. I, I do hope that it's like an even starting starting line. Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, I've done enough of these raids where, like, usually it's it's a lot of playing, and I think that negatively impacts my enjoyment of each expansion. And I just want to take it at a little bit more yeah. casual pace. Yeah. What do we finish, Brian? We finished, like, top 100, right? Yeah, we finished in the top 60th. But that was that I for even us, like, you know, we us having to take a break and, like, yeah, I, like I, come back the next day to finish it. I'm the one that had to call it because I'm like, we're not making progress. Well, yeah, we the the, the problem the problem with it is no. like if you if your team doesn't finish it before a certain time, mm -hmm. everyone's going to be tired yeah. and like you're not going to mm -hmm. progress because people yeah. are just getting worse and worse in their mindset. Yeah, and like people just want to go to sleep and it's like, oh, we just need to get this done, but it's like that you're is gonna get, your brain is just going to get worse and worse from this moment on. Absolutely, yeah. you got to call it. It it is amazing how that happens in Destiny raids, and I I mean I think we can all remember moments where that's occurred. Uh, I may, might have told the story before. A friend of mine was doing Crota on hard mode for about five or six, you know, hours, and they couldn't do it. And then one of them left, and then they just then it falls apart. It, well, yeah, but then they were like, okay, we're gonna shut it down. I was like, oh, I don't know. Let me jump in. And like, I'll I'll see if I can help out. And I was fresh, and it, I'm not saying, hey, I was the reason they beat the the raid, but we did it two times. <laughs> and then we beat it and the buddy who left was so mad but that's because you just get in these that's how france where, team done it they got new people in and they finally beat it yeah and it's because you just are in this you're in a mode where you're just like playing so long you're so frustrated you just can't do it and yeah you could literally probably shut the game off for like an hour come back you know or get some rest same folks and just do it again you just need yeah, a little and that, bit of and i think that's how exactly how we did it like we had we we took the night, like we, I, I think we just stopped at like two or three in the morning, maybe four. It was pretty and late. Yeah, was I, pretty was, I was not feeling well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's we, like, because we started, we did the grind, then the raid launches, and then we grinded for like, it was like another eight hours or yeah. six hours after that. So like we had been playing 15 hours or something yeah. and and crazy. When we came back, yeah. you know, we, we all had some sleep. We came back and we did it in two tries. Yeah. Well, remember, contest was off when we came back. Contest was off, so like yeah. we did, mm -hmm. we right, did, we right. did get that initial like we were no longer. And then it was just like we did it, like yeah, two, we, two, we did three. it, yeah, like we just weren't getting the mechanics down. And then like mm -hmm. when we came back, we just got it. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's good. I think it allows the people who like to do these raids competitively yeah, for sure. a contest and you know they're trying to get worlds first do that but it also gives the people who are not trying to do that, like you said you just want to take it a little bit more of a casual pace mm -hmm. for those people who want to play the game you know quote quote casually for the four or five days leading up to it wherever power they end up doing you know and getting to they can still play the raid and spend most of like a saturday and or sunday playing it now it does change a little bit when you're overseas they have you know 
uh, it's Sunday for them, but it is one of those things that I think it's better. It's the first time it's mm-hmm. on a weekend, so I think it's it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, also another consideration for doing the raid races, both you and I, Brian, have a lot more responsibilities at IGN this year, mm-hmm. yeah. so it's going to be a little bit more challenging for us to dedicate the amount of so time that we need to dedicate mm-hmm. in order to do it. I mean, maybe we could just do it super casual, like just grind yeah, after that's work the thing is like and just that. do it do it like hey like we didn't really prep let's just go in and try. yeah and the thing is yeah. it's like we don't know like what the raid prep is going to be mm-hmm. around this time like because bungie could announce and say hey like i was saying earlier is that hey like nothing you do prior to raid day is going to benefit you when yeah. yeah starts so mm-hmm. that way you know however many hours uh, assuming that assuming that the raid yeah. launches at you know 10 a.m on saturday's reset or if it launches like they did with uh crown of sorrow where it mm-hmm. launched later in the day mm-hmm. um but I, yeah. yeah, like if if I myself prefer that, well, like we don't have to do a whole bunch of raid prep like leading up to the the raids launch. Yep. Yeah, uh, I'm totally fine with it. Yeah, maybe we'll still do it casually. I haven't decided, so that was a difficult yeah. question for me to even consider because you know I thought about like how the last few ones have gone and just like. I keep talking about like it's the best experience ever, and simultaneously it's like the worst. not healthy and something. Yeah, it's like it's so, for me yeah. the decision weighs on how much is needed to play up yep. until the raid. That's that's it. Yep. That's really the the deciding factor for me. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, we really like the new armors. Let's talk about the event going on this week. Uh, uh, What's the name yeah. of the, the location? Heroes. Oh, uh, Air- EDZ. In aerial Zone. Yeah. Aerial Zone, yeah. So I ran it before the show for the first time. I finished out my green set helmet, yep. and uh, I saw all the other requirements. You know, I just I just need to get some time and play it. But here's the thing. Uh, a few weeks back, we were sort of negative about how the chest glitch went away mm, yeah. for Season of Opulence and menagerie. the Menagerie. menagerie yeah. Yeah. And you mad about that? Well, well, we didn't like that, like, it's one drop for, yeah. like, a 20-minute activity. Like, they should have maybe yeah. changed the timer to 90 seconds and then, or, or done something else so it wasn't just a, yeah, yeah. single chest. Over. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess I guess I've been having that conversation with guests. I, I you watched. Guys have been I think that. you guys yeah. just watched spoiled. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, let's, let's talk about Souls of uh, the Heroes and how this new event works. Basically, you go in, and there's, there's targets that you have to take out. You take out all those targets, then you take out the final boss, and then you get a timer, and based on the number of things that that you've killed you get that many chests right. mm. this is a great system yeah, for reward for sure. players yeah. i think yeah, and I think, it's great. I, I think it's sort of something that they were like i always say i'm like all right solstice is pretty interesting you're pretty close you're on to something here i feel like this is a test for something that's coming yes yeah. fast forward a few weeks <laughs> here it is we have solstice heroes i'm like all right they've refined the formula again and mm. they were developing something sort of in the same vein that i ended up enjoying quite a bit i think what, it's, I think what did you think of it brian i think it's i think it's cool yeah. yeah. Um, the I'm not a big fan of the armor requirements. Um, the grind, just, just because it's it's a heavy grind that we've done. Thank you, Destin. Yeah. A thousand times um, before, <laughs> and so I'm just I'm kind of just a little demotivated to get the majestic set. Yeah. Even though I'm mm-hmm. I know I'm going to do it because I'm like I'm like one or two um, triumphs away from getting the uh, the moments of triumph title. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's PvP requirements in there too, right? I know, I know. but it's it's. I, I don't I don't know what they fully are, but I know yeah. that at least the green sets just like kill ten people. But they do I, look awesome. I love these sets. They're um, really good. I've been working on my hunter. I think that's yeah. the set that I'm gonna go for out of all of them. I yeah. like all of them equally. The biggest. Uh, set, exactly. There there are ways to do it too. You can just like wait and like finish out one set, then get the others uh, yeah. an easier way. At least I think that's what I've read on Reddit. I haven't played too much of the event. I played it two times. Yeah. Right. And I was able to get fairly far with the green set. But I, I have heard from others that have played a lot more that it does get a bit grindy. I have seen some people on Twitter tweet me that they already have the legendary set. Yeah. So that's kind of where where I'm at with the event. Generally speaking, it's been hard for me to be incentivized to get that Iron Banner set, to get the Solstice set, because I feel like this is too similar to the set we had last year. It's the exact right. same set as we had last year. Yeah. Well, it's aesthetically. It's, it's a, little a little different. different. You got the $10 glows on there, which we didn't talk about. <laughs> um, that's a little pricey, right? That's the same right? set of Solstice Heroes 2018. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, but this set can be, um, you know, upgraded to do, like, mod 2.0, right? Like, these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I don't that's your incentive. These, these exactly. actually, the actual sets you earn, I don't believe, are. But when it launches, when it launches you can go to the, you'll be able to the Postmaster, and then you get versions that are compatible. I'll, so I'll say this. I, th- I I had a lot of fun. I liked, you know, grinding through the green set. I could see myself doing that for a while. But at the same time, my brain's also saying, 
but then you can't hang out with your wife. You can't. Oh, you can't like man. Like you can't take your bird photos that it you like to do. It all just makes sense and, now. And Destin. at the end of the day, what are you going to walk away with, incentivization wise? A cool armor set that's going to be obsolete oh, October first. Man, it's so weird to sit in this chair yeah. having been married and with children for so long. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, see you actually process that what, in your brain now. What was the joke that you saw on Reddit? Checklist simulator? Oh, no. I was saying, I was saying, like, yeah, yeah, like I can't remember what it was. It was either a tweet or comment, but it's like uh, Destiny, kind of with a lot of these activities, has become to do list the game. Yeah, and, for sure. And it's like, for me, I do like the fact that the armor is now going to be functional in the next season. That honestly is the main reason why I will grind for this. Mm -hmm. I would have been way less incentivized to grind for the armor because I do like it. Uh, but you know, last time you did it, and then you never wore it again because it wasn't upgradable or you didn't have any perks on it when they announced all the different stuff, well, you know, for Forsaken. So at uh, least this armor looks nice, and and you're going to be able to like you know, mod it and and wear it in the future. The biggest struggle with me with Destiny is I feel like they've sacrificed a lot of the storytelling with the last few updates, where we don't get a lot of narrative e delivery. It's yes. all like it's all like sort of hinted at within the universe. Right. This is a model that Fortnite does extremely well. It all uses all environmental yeah. storytelling plays in the game and uh honestly i i miss the days old destin misses the days of halo 3 and getting to experience that mm. story of yeah what is the conclusion of halo 2 i waited all these years let's see what happens with master chief and cortana and yeah. the brave mind what happens with them halo 5 even though i don't like that campaign i get to partake in this story and then secondarily there's this you know multiplayer aspect to it yeah and uh destiny has moved pretty far away from the storytelling lately. I hope it comes back in Shadowkeep with this large expansion in that... Uh, They've moved away from it in a different way. Like They're it, delivering it differently, yeah. but in a way where you kind of have to dig scale. It's on a it. smaller scale, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like If you think about the storytelling from Season of the Drifter, like there's not a whole lot there because you I mean you're going through the those, but you don't the play nine. it and see it again either you don't right? play it and see so. it again it's like you go through the the invitation of the nine you know on a week-to-week -week basis mm -hmm. and you don't get a cut scene every time yeah yeah um, obviously like you we can't expect Bungie to make you know just crazy cinematic cut scenes. cutscenes you got one at the beginning you got one at the exactly. end and that so, was it right? so and, that, yeah. and that's it so that I think that that's more of a testament mm -hmm. to what they're able to do with a, something like us like the annual pass where they yeah. can't deliver yeah you know large cinematic cutscenes every three months yeah, um, but leading, I will say that leading up to this, um, I've been just e even, you know, watching Bife's channels and, you know, looking at like Eris and Toland and just leading up to, you know, there's tons of interesting lore there. I know lore. that, and I yeah. can go watch that on Bife's channel. Exactly, but it's but not I don't, in the I don't game. even need to play Destiny. Yeah, I know, and so, <laughs> so, so, so you're right. It is one of those things where, mm -hmm. from a narrative standpoint, I think that that's one of the biggest challenges with, with live service games in general. Now you're saying like Fortnite does that pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just a, a standpoint of when you have a bunch of story elements that are buried into either grimoire cards or triumphs or all these other things, that becomes the narrative delivery. And I mean, what do we have in Destiny 1? It, we kind of didn't like it. We all laughed at it. It's like you're flying in with your ship and then there's the dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like yeah, I, yeah. I kind of miss that. But in a way, I mean, I well, miss well, that because actually, it was at least something. Right. The thing is, like, but when you do it, terrible. Oh, right. But so that's my point. Back then. But when you do it over and over and over again, and that's what I was talking about with live service games, it, it becomes repetitive. And nine times out of ten, we were always asking to skip that stuff. It's like, OK, I've, you know, we've woken the hive. I've seen this. I've seen yeah. this 50 million times. Let me just. Yeah. They, the they eventually did add the skit. The they, they did. The skit, uh, yeah. So I, I feel like that's kind of yeah. probably why that's happening. But um, oh, oh, that I was, was a great line. So I liked it. <laughs> it was really good. Woke in the heart. It was good. It was way better with uh, Dinklage. Oh, yeah, for sure. I was going to say something else, too, about um, I lost track a little bit Sorry. about the. No, it's OK. The armors. Um, but OK, I'm going to think of it. Come back. Yeah. So just just talking about the grind, generally speaking, it's like. Uh, I actually hopped in today. I had a great time playing Destiny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I saw the grind in front of me, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to chase this. I ha I already got this armor set, like, you know, last season. I already have the Iron Banner armor set and the grenade part. Like, I'm really not oh, enjoying it. Yeah. And I, I, I don't want to continue doing things I don't enjoy for an armor set that I had already acquired yeah. in the past that they're, they're you know, resurfacing. Yep. Yeah. So largely for me, it's been... Like that's that's what there is to chase right now. Yeah. I, I, Light it up the grenade part. They did tweak yeah. that though too, which was yes, nice. and yeah. that's actually a great segue, CJ, because yeah. they tweaked a few of the events, and I'm curious to hear how you guys think, or what you guys think about these. So, uh, let me just find the patch notes here really quick. Um, I'm assuming you didn't get through the Iron Banner quest then. Uh, no, I'm at the same part you are with okay. grenades, and I just yeah. was like, 
I was getting grenade kills, but like it was a secondary explosion, so it wasn't counting. And I'm hunter like, struggle. Are you doing it with a hunter? Doing it with a titan. Okay, titan yeah. or warlocks, yeah. you have it easy. Hunter struggle, <laughs> dear God, there is no hunter grenade here, that here kills anything in one hit. Almost, it's disgusting. Go yes. Ahead. So, so here are a few of the changes. Uh, Gambit Prime and Reckoning reward rates will be highly increased. Great. They will also have bad luck protection to guarantee a drop after a set can we amount. Just, can of we runs. just? Can we all just? agree that bad luck protection just needs to be <laughs> implemented yes. from the beginning. Yep. Like, I'm not talking about like, I'm just talking about <laughs> like, cause it's going to soften that armor grind that yeah. we all it's, 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 it's Sorry to, to take it away. I just want to just address it. that. Like every time something new comes out in Destiny, yeah. you know, like the the drop rate of weapons or armor just seems pretty bad. And then at some point, Bungie's like, all right, we're adding bad luck protection. It's happened for like almost everything. <laughs> yeah. In that came out before. But Activision's gone now. So <laughs> Yeah, so it's just like it's like Bungie, bad please, luck just, protection please enabled. just just please just put bad luck protection in from the beginning <laughs> so we don't have to deal with the constant it, uh, struggle. Yeah, so I'm happy about that. In addition, reckoning difficulty will be tuned to be more welcoming as you hunt for rewards. Mm -hmm. Great. Braytech schematics will no longer have a daily lockout and will give better chances toward more weapons that players do not own. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, but I've already done all of that. Yeah. So it's like, thanks. Here's There's a lot the of people rub. still need it, but yeah. Here's the rub. Mountaintop and Windigo Pinnacle Quest will become more accessible. Specific quest objectives will be tuned based on player feedback. I mean, these... gee, which one for Mountaintop could that be? <laughs> which mystery quest step could you be discussing? Would it happen to be double uh, kills? kills? Probably yeah. double kills. With a grenade launcher? Trajectory. I mean, yeah. it's it's weird. Like, are you weak at getting double yeah. kills with fighting line? <laughs> huh? I said, yeah. are you weak at fighting yeah. line? You, I mean, you've said this before, Brian. Well, I think I've probably even heard you say it as well, too. You're like, you know what? I'm not going to go and get these things right away because I know they'll tune in. Malfi yeah, malfeasance. I'm exactly. Like, oh wait, I got malfeasance after the, after the yeah, uh, yeah. after Little the adjustment. Yeah, malfeasance, yeah. dredgen, yeah, windigo and mountaintop. I I waited. Windigo, yeah. windigo yeah. though. Windigo is achievable. Wind, yeah. Windigo is way more achievable than mountaintop, and I did that grind, and yeah. it was fine. Like it takes a while, but it's just like just you know you, it was fine. So so here's the thing. As it's the, just, just oh, playing. Sorry. Yeah. In addition, as awesome. the season comes to a close, menagerie chests will become more rewarding as Kelsey's fit. Again, addressing community feedback. That's yep. it's excellent. It's excellent to hear that they're addressing it. I, I think people like Brian who actually did the well, did the work. There are people out there who yeah. did the work for Mountaintop and Windigo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I th I think they're probably going to be a little bummed to hear that it's going to be easier. I think it's still going to be challenging. Yeah. I think I think like if if this keeps bumming you out, stop doing the chaser. Well, on. so that was yeah. the debate. Like that's what I was asking. Like, do you feel quote quote robbed that you put in all the time and now it's going to be easier for other yeah. people? Because I don't like like I because I got a to lot use it. I got to use it in these activities. Yes, you know, like I got to use it in Crown of Sorrow. That people are like, man, mountaintop and yes, and outrageous fortune are these great weapons that you really want to bring into. Yeah into this raid and so like I got, to, I got to use them in that time that's yeah. my so. take on it too where it's like you know grinding for lunas and all those other weapons that you're in pvp I'm, I'm a few kills away from revoker now i mean i heard it's not like a great sniper rifle but i just wanted for the it's collection. much more achievable than like not forgotten yeah way yeah. more achievable than that's not forgotten. The one gun i think i'll never get well it's just i mean I that had a whole host of issues where you just couldn't it. connect and find like games that's yeah. a different mm -hmm. problem than you know you're just not being able to play you know, and, and just the game and achieve them. But it is one of those things where, yeah, there's a lot of these things now where I feel like even even with Menagerie, right, and the, the chest updating, if they're going to change it back, uh, yeah, it feels like a lot of the feedback that they're taking and tweaking is happening on a much faster cadence as well, I think, to the only thing that's odd is that I think sometimes when they do major adjustments, people I think are still like concerned about the meta and supers, like one-eyed mask. There's still things like mm -hmm. that that people want tweaked. God roll one-eyed mask for sale this week. That's what I saw Reddit saying. Exactly. Too, and so then what happens is often they'll wait for so long and then they'll make massive sweeping changes and then the meta gets kind of destroyed jumbled. in a weird way and jumbled and you never know. Bungie is known for happened. waiting for like a big content <laughs> drop to yeah. address these. So changes. many big changes. But yeah. Um, but yeah, these are a bunch of you know nice little bite-sized ones that are, are coming up over the next few months. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. I'm glad they're making tweaks. I do kind of miss the days of running the raid to get the the cool armor sets that were a status symbol yeah for for having the only the only downside again with that is i remember just everybody walking around the tower with, with the 32 gear on so there was mm -hmm. no chroma then there was no well there was shaders but there was just yeah everybody looked the same because you were all trying to like you know show the same flex the same mm -hmm. gear so yeah but with mod 2.0 i can have all that raid gear but then i can just mod yes it with 
I mm-hmm. can just use those silly vampire. That's roads what I mean. <laughs> yeah, the warlock I, from the. I really think that Mods 2.0 coming in Shadowkeep will actually, yeah, address that and and you know because the visual aesthetic of your guardian is, I think, a good chunk of the reason why people play. It does suck that ninety percent of all the good looking armor that I have has freaking bow ammo or something <laughs> stupid that I don't want. Yeah, so I'm really excited that uh, <laughs> bow holding. holding. Our, <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Friend of the show was yeah. saying that, like, oh, I did this and the armor was so bad. And then Cosmo responded and said, yeah, we should totally redo the armor system in Destiny 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was Fallout plays. Oh, was it? Oh, and he yeah. was just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that they was were, I think response. they were talking about the Eververse after. It's like, yeah, we put bad perks on those. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. It's <laughs> like, we know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, like when you were talking about the Eververse, like our just <laughs> yeah. like we do put bad perks in potentially. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's largely all the all the topics that we really needed to cover off on this week. Some really really good news. Is there anything I missed, you guys? I just wanted to say one yeah. thing about the EAZ bosses. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have played it, but yesterday I was playing on the EAZ, EAZ and there is a wizard boss that, yeah. that splits that splits into two she, yeah. she, she, I got she, her like, today yeah she splits and like has this like you know you shoot her you damage her a bunch and then she splits between a void and a fire like yes and mm-hmm. so like she's like AOE a ghostly thing. apparition and it's like it's something completely unique that I haven't seen in Destiny before and I mm-hmm. think that was great I just wanted to mention yeah. that that yeah, was pretty cool I, I really like that and I was like oh maybe they didn't have the stomp mechanic on this and then I got stomped you got stomped uh, I got, yeah. damn it I was like <laughs> ah it's still there they're so close don't get too close Destiny. yeah sorry don't get too close. Uh, I don't think that actually picks up yeah so we hear feedback sometimes in our headphones but yeah. it doesn't pick up so that's the reason why we're wearing it if you do hear a pop or two we got to make another little adjustment uh and so we're going to tweak that for next week's yeah. episode we are aware of it i heard it twice in my earphones so but uh cool. for this week i don't think that uh, we have anything else to cover off with but to recap we got a cool event going on right now in destiny it's going to be going on for a while you got more than enough time to get your armor sets if you yep. want to take it slow and steady like i'm gonna yep. uh there was a delay Shadowkeep is now coming out October 1st. Bungie has good reasons for that. Yep. They want to make sure that it's a better launch for you guys, and uh, they let us know first. Yep. Uh, we talked about the grind. We talked about that raid release date, which is, man, I can't wait to see how this ends up going. I'm really excited to see how yeah. how many people are able to participate, Absolutely. what it's going to be like with the new challenges and yep. such. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that was the the general look. And uh, we have more time to play Borderlands, Brian. I know. I'm very <laughs> excited about that. Yeah, it's been so exactly. long since I've been excited for a Borderlands game, and I'm very happy about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Until next time, everybody, Guardians, Guardians out. out.